Welcome back everybody. This is a question that was asked a bunch of times by users of the library and which is also pretty fundamental, let's say, for the design of the library. The point is, how do we price the same instrument on a bunch of different dates, evaluation dates and uh, consequently market conditions? Okay, I'll start as usual by importing what I need. Okay, let's say our instrument is a, a simple one, a fixed rate bond, and we want to price it on a number of dates. I'll keep a dictionary with the results. And to price it on today's date, say, or today as I, as I wrote this or, or whatever it is, I well, I create the bond, so I define the scheduler, whatever I need. I create the bond object. I am going to need a discount curve to price this. For To, to make it quick, I'll just list a bunch of, of rates here, zero rates here, instead of going through the, the, the bootstrap of the curve based on market quotes. And given the bond, given the discount curve, I'll create an engine for the bond, a passive discount handle, in turn I pass the engine to the bond and setting the evaluation date to today, I can ask the bond for its price and here it is. So creation of the bond, creation of the curve, link them together and uh, and price. Now if I have to price the bond on a bunch of dates, uh, I can repeat for all dates, but this is not how the library is designed. What we can do instead, well, at the very least, is we can keep the same instrument and change the curve and the evaluation date. So, let's see what uh, this is what yesterday was according to the, to the pricing calendar we have. Here I generate, uh, well, I, in, 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 in a real world use case, I would have the, 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 the rates stored somewhere in files, in a relational database, what, uh, whatever it is. Here I'm just going to, to perturbate the base rates, which I used here with, by, by a random amount, and use that one, those ones, to build the curve. So new rates, rates for yesterday, I create a new zero curve with those rates and what I do, I'm not touching the instrument, instead of just setting the evaluation date to yesterday and linking the discount handle which I created here and which I have passed to the engine, I link it to the new discount curve. At this point, if I ask the bond for its price, it's going to be calculated based on the new curve and the new evaluation date. So here is the difference between the two. If I repeat this, I can generate prices for prices for, for whatever set of dates I need. In this case, I'm doing it for the whole of last year. I'm going back by one business day, one business day at each step in the in the while loop. I'm generating new rates, setting the evaluation date and the discount curve to be used and mm, pressing the bond and store the result into the price dictionary. Here we go, that was quick because we are just generating fake rates and feeding, feeding them to the, to the curve and this is what happened. Okay, you can see the, the, the random variations, but overall you can see the trend due to the bond getting closer to, to maturity. So the price in, increases. Uh, as I said, for brevity, I just used the generated zero rates. In uh, real cases, you might probably be bootstrapping the curve from, uh, from uh, uh, rates, from quoted rates, as in this case. I'll do it very 
quickly here I'm not going to use uh, different kinds of market rates for for uh, to keep it simple but you might have uh, different kind of rates swaps uh, deposits uh, overnight swaps or whatever it is in this case I'm just putting together a bunch of overnight uh, swaps these are the quoted rates and the tenors are from one to ten years and I'm going to create the curve based on uh, on this uh, uh, helpers one thing to note I'm not uh, giving a specific uh, evaluation day uh, a given evaluation date to the to the curve um, instead I'm telling the curve that it should uh, its reference date should be zero reference date according to target calendar with respect to whatever is the, the current evaluation date okay I also add well just make it a slightly more interesting I'm going to assume this was the risk-free curve and I'm going to add one point of um, one percentage point of spread over the risk-free curve to create a, a discount curve in uh, well in the, the real in, in the real world your spread might be more more uh, might not be constant or you might have a different model entirely to get discount curve but well the the, the, the point of the of the notebook stays the, the same okay so we recalculate today's price based on this discount curve which means reset the evaluation date to today relink the discount handle and here we go as before we can do this uh, going on a, on, on a set of different evaluation dates except since this time we're entirely based on quotes uh, so we have the quotes here for the rates which we saved in, in this list and which quote for, for the spread I'm not even recreated the, recreating the curves instead I'm just generating new base market rates and I'm setting each of the quotes to the corresponding rate I'm also setting the spread quote to a new value in all this I'm not creating any new object just setting values to the quotes then I set the evaluation date the new date and I price the bond so here we go it's going to take a bit longer than in the previous case because in this case we are going one curve bootstrap for for each evaluation date not not simply getting zero rates and running a, a linear interpolation through that so it's going to keep I'm going to take a few seconds more okay here we go and again I'm going to plot the thing so a random noise and the overall trend that moves towards the, the, the maturity of the of the bond so this is more or less the point that I wanted to make mm, well just one more thing because uh, if I can say it in a couple of minutes uh, this was a very simple instrument so fixed rate bond coupons uh, coupon amounts were predetermined and uh, you just had to discount them to the to the to the, 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 the settlement date in case of uh, floaters as the bond I'm instantiating here so same scale as the other but floating rate bond based on six month variable you have the additional complication that uh, in order to price it you requ might require some past index fixings this is because uh, the bond is going to forecast the coupon amounts for the future future coupons based on the on the curve that on the risk-free curve that we passed to the to the index but uh, needs to be given the, mm, the the fixing for the current coup the, the current coupon the one which is currently been uh, been priced 
the way to do it is to add fixings to the index instance like I'm doing here and at this point the bind can be priced. The tricky part here is that the current coupon varies as, as you mm, change the evaluation date. So I set the fixing to February 6. Uh, let me see what was the current date. It was today which was May 9th. So Okay, so we are inside the coupon, in the middle of the coupon that started at, at this date. So as soon as we stay inside this coupon, we can get new prices for the bond. So I move the evaluation date to March 1st or February 15th. I'm not bothering changing the discount curve here. We are getting new prices. If we move the evaluation date past this fixing, Again, we're going to get an error because now the fixing, which is now this one is in the future, is going to be forecast on the curve. But uh, sorry, the, 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 this fixing is going to be forecast on the curve. But we need the, the one for uh, August 4th, which now is the fixing date for the current coupon. We add that, and again, we are good. So you can either do this as you go back or what I suggest is just load into the, into the, 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 the index the whole uh, history of fixings for, for uh, your eyebrow or whatever it is you're using and uh, forget about it, just go back and forth in time as you, as you wish. Uh, I might have a few more details here in the notebook but uh, while we're well past the 10 minutes mark so I'll just keep those which are less uh, less relevant and uh, and call it a, a recording for this time so thanks for listening so far and uh, see you next time